actually did some of these activities with my fifth grade class that I'm doing um, for block right now. I kind of um, toned them down a little bit to do for fifth grade since this is sixth grade. But um, so I'm just going to give like a little background about what I'm doing. Starting on for lesson one with the water cycle, um, I kind of have like a Prezi presentation just to introduce it. Um, I did that with my fifth grade class and they loved it. They thought it was a really cool tool. They had never seen that before. Um, I had them come up, pretend that they're solids, liquids, and gases, like the particles in the solids, liquids, and gas, like packed together, like spread apart, moving around, and um, that was really neat. Um, and then I kind of go into um, like the order of the water cycle. So condensation forms the, or comes from the clouds and all that. Um, so I have nine props. Um, so like a cloud, the ground, a poster that says condensation, um, stuff like that. And I have nine students come up and each one gets one of the props. And then uh, I tell them that they can't talk and that they have to get in the order of the water cycle. Um, and the other students like tell them like what, where to go when they all discuss it. It was really neat and they really liked it. It kind of got them up and moving and um, was really interactive. Um, and then I just did a little worksheet to, to as homework just to kind of like refresh what we did. Um, so after introducing that, the next day I did climates in different regions. So we talked about the water cycle again, like precipitation in different areas. Um, for example, the polar region, temperate, the cold region, um, the region that we live in. Um, what I have in here is to break them up into groups and have each one each one assign a country, um, and each country will be in a different climate region. And then they have to create a travel brochure on that country, um, talking about the weather, um, the climate, what weather's like in different seasons um, for people who may want to travel there. Um, I would grid them on their participation with their group. Um, and on different aspects of the brochure, such as organization, their ideas, conventions, graphics, creativity, something like that. Um, the next day I go, I start natural disasters, and I'm spending two days on natural disasters. Um, the first day I'm talking about earthquakes and volcanoes, and the next day I'm talking about hurricanes and tornadoes. Um, both days I'm kind of doing a discussion with them, what do they know, what do they want to know, um, and then going into a Prezi presentation just on the different types. Um, always ask them first, like, what is a volcano? Um, I found that they really like to um, like discuss with you and share their ideas and share stories and stuff before you give them the answer. Um, so I have that. Um, and then each day I'm giving them a worksheet on the natural disaster. Um, the reason I'm introducing natural disasters for two days is because it's leading into a project that we're going to do, um, a natural disaster news broadcast, um, which I'm actually doing with my class right now, and they're presenting their news broadcast tomorrow, so I'm really excited. Um, but what they are, what it is, is I have my groups, um, have them into groups, and then I assign each one one of the natural disasters that I went over. And um, they are news broadcast teams. So each person has a part. Someone might be in the news studio. Someone might be on the scene. Someone might be like a victim of the disaster. And I give them a list of all the things that they have to cover. So why did the natural disaster occur? Where did it occur? When was the last time a disaster like this happened? Um, what kind of conditions come with this? So like rain or lightning or hail or tornadoes or whatever. And um, what safety precautions need to be taken? Um, so they're having a lot of fun with it. And it's been really neat. So um, that was something. Um, so then I will, I will introduce that on day five. And then they'll have a full week to um, prepare for those. Um, I'll give them a couple work days in class um, and then they'll present them the following Friday. And they'll be graded on that on participation, creativity, information covered, um, and organization. Um, the next day I'm going into the greenhouse effect, so I'm kind of just doing a PowerPoint on that. Um, and then I'm going to do an experiment um, with glass jars and thermometers. Um, you take two thermometers underneath a lamp, put them both under a lamp for three minutes. Um, and then you, they record the temperature down. And then they will put the glass jar over one of the thermometers and leave the other thermometer out. And then they'll record the temperatures every minute for 10 minutes. And they'll see that the one in the glass jar goes up a lot more than the one sitting out. And then um, discuss it, do a worksheet on it, record their, or like talk about the data that they found and just kind of do some like discussion off of that. Um, the next day, based off of the greenhouse effect, 
fact, I'm going to go into global warming. Um, so just do a PowerPoint on that or a Prezi, and then I want to break them up into discussion groups and just have them discuss, like, why is global warming occurring? Um, is it going to get worse? You know, do you believe that there's a, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I don't know. Some people say it's not happening. So do you believe that there's like a fight going on with that? And just kind of stuff like that. Just I want to spend a day just talking about that with them. Um, the next day I want to go into what can we do. Um, just brainstorming. What can we do to help the environment? Um, you know, simple things even like light bulbs and turning off water and turning off lights and stuff like that. Um, and also I want to focus on recycling because I think a lot of people, like even I, when I made this activity, I didn't know like things that could be recycled and things that couldn't. Like I always thought pizza boxes could be recycled, but they can't because of the grease in them. They can't be broken down. So um, I wanted to do an activity with them on what can be recycled, what needs to be go, go in the garbage, and what can be put in the compost pile, and like what is a compost pile. And um, so I have um, an activity where I have all different pictures, and they're in groups, and they have to organize them into a recycling bin, a garbage can, and a compost pile. Um, so, and then we'll talk about that, what they put in each one, and why, and why certain things can be recycled, why certain things can't be recycled. them a day where the day before that their presentations are presented just to kind of get together finalize their projects you know talk to me if there's any last minute things any last minute props they need and um, that's what we did today in my practicum class it was their final day to like get everything together and um, they did a little dry run through and so um, 